Today's broadcast was brought to you in part by the sold-out Baltimore Music Awards. Let your voice be heard at the 2017 BMAs. Polls are now open for this 7th annual red carpet event honoring Baltimore. Log on to BaltimoreMusicAwards.com before December 3rd to cast your votes in all categories. Now, that is for the voting. The actual ceremony is December the 5th. Speak easy. Are y'all ready? Yes, sir. Always. It's on y'all. Hey, and we're back. Here live, speak easy. Guess who's back? <laughs> y'all miss me? I know y'all miss me because I wasn't here. We got we got Lady Pope back in the studio after hey she y'all. went to Vegas and uh, got her groove back. Yes, to Vegas. Damn, Walk, came back. Huh? Walked into Cougardom <laughs> out there. <laughs> EJ Stewart, the sophisticated st- savage, here with uh, Lady Pope, and we're back together again. Yes. And it's cold outside, November 16th. We're here at Radio windy. on Fire Studios in... Windy, little nippy out. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Radio on Fire Studios here in Baltimore City, Maryland. Catch us live on the Diamond K page, Diamond K Morning Show page, and uh, Radio on Fire page. Also, www.radioonfire.com. I also left the uh, call-in number on the comments. And uh, it's been a lot going on, man. It's been a lot going on. Yeah. It definitely has. It, it seems crazy. It seems more and more crazy between uh, sports, the president, mental health. I mean, just a lot of crazy things going on. And we wanted to dedicate this episode to mental health is real. It absolutely is. Mental health is mental real. health is real. I mean, starting off with a cup with a few quick hits. Um, last night there was a murder of a Baltimore City homicide detective um, on the force, I think, 18 years. I think he was in his early 40s, 43, had five children. Um, You know, we don't know the details and we don't know uh, the ins and outs of things, but we do know that a man's life was lost. And the fact that a homicide detective was killed that is a profound, um, disgusting, uh, horrific thing. I don't know everything that is, you know, went on. I, obviously, I wasn't there, but that's wild. Yeah, you have a man who is doing his job trying to get justice for some family out there who lost a loved one on these streets, and he himself is, you know, met with violence. It's absolutely ridiculous. And not only that, before that, um, I believe a brother was killed. I think he was, I'm not certain, he was a housing security uh, yes. guard or something of that nature, and he was known to be yes. like an activist. He was also murdered, man. And I think the, the crazy thing, yeah, the crazy thing about it is like, there used to be a time, and I don't care what city you are from originally or where you grew up, there used to be a point in time where there was a thing, it was civilians and people in the life. You know, right. and it just doesn't seem to be a difference. Those lines are very blurred now. I won't even say blurred. I won't say they, they don't exist. For a brother that got killed as housing. Well, and in New York City, you did see a lot of housing um, police get killed. Um, and I will I will say that. But for a brother who was housing police and also an activist in that community, like nobody knew him, like. You know, like, I I just don't understand it. And then a homicide detective, like, if all things. At 4 o'clock in the afternoon. It was 4 o'clock in the afternoon? Yes. It was daylight. I did not know that. Yeah. I did not know that. I think that there is such a mistrust with the police department. There is such a, um, it's just a a complete low regard of life. Like, I think that a lot of our young people just don't feel like they have anything to live for. So they don't value life at all. And, you know, at one point in time, people used to be scared of the police. I don't think these people are, are, you know, our fellow Baltimoreans, I don't think they fear the police at all. Yeah, I mean, the young people today, um, from my interactions, they, they really do not have a fear of, death until it's too late and you know uh i I forget what movie it was but they said fear checks the angry spirit and if you don't have any fear 
you know, you're liable to do anything. Yeah, you just feel and like I can't liable. believe I didn't know that they I didn't know he was killed at four PM. Yeah, it was in that, the afternoon. That's outrageous. But a lot of uh, most of the murders that occur occur during the daytime. They it's are. not even at night. They are. It's happening right in broad daylight. And then, you know, these people know that when they do this, they know no one is really gonna step up. Because if you yeah. took a police officer's life, broad daylight in the middle of the week. Right. Why would I speak on that? You know, I mean, yeah. and this, and then you have, and he's a homicide detective. You have seen where people have the witness intimidation, where they have, you know, murder people who are witnesses. So it's completely out of control, all the way around the board. But I mean, what message is it sending? And I mean, this was supposed to be a quick hit, but I think it's something that we definitely need to get on. What message are we sending as a city when we can't even protect our officers? And then there's just a there's an influx of guns on the street i think fox uh was doing a report i didn't see anything about it i didn't follow up on it but basically asking where the guns are coming from and i did i know on one of the shows previously i talked about the atf hasn't increased in size in over 20 plus years and all these illegal guns are flooding these urban cities it's like kids are having access to guns all over and i was talking to some i was talking to a, a gentleman from the South, he's from the state of Mississippi, where he was saying, you know, Maryland has a problem where he believed that we should be able to have open carry. Um, and he thinks that would solve a lot of the problems. Uh, what do you what do you, you agree? I agree. Why? I agree. I'm, I'm pro gun, actually. I know. No, I mean, I'm, I'm pro having uh, firearms as well. But I mean, we're talking about open carry. Anybody well, I'm, can. I'm saying because, you hit. know, if you if you see something working. You know, in many instances, I think that here in Baltimore, we don't do that. We see things in educational systems and across the country that work, but we mm -hmm. don't adapt those um, methods. Um, you have other places, other states that are open to carry whose crime rate is a lot lower than ours. I mean, someone needs to take a look into that. But I think that you are less likely to carjack someone, run in somebody's house, mm -hmm. um, rob somebody on the street. If you know there's a very high likelihood that that person might also have a weapon. See, I don't I don't know the statistical uh, evidence on that because a state like Florida has a problem with that, um, with the open carry. Then they're, they're not really good at it um, in the grand scheme of things. I don't know statistically, but culturally, they're not really good at it with the stand your ground. Um, Miami is still violent. You know, other Orlando is, is, is growing up violent. Well, you have some broad laws mm. in Florida that need to be specified. I'm, I'm not even. I'm not even saying that. I'm saying in the sense that open carry. I don't know what it's really doing for them. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is, you look at a state like New York, and I grew up during the time there. Grew up there during the time in which you know they harshened the sentences for um, gun carriers and, and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And I remember a shift in, in, in on the streets, just people honestly thinking twice before they pulled the gun. But then the other thing is, you know, New York jail system is world renowned. You know, when you hear about people going to Rikers, whether it's good or bad, you know, it's not like what you hear here. When you hear about Baltimore City uh, detention center or the jails here, you have you have uh, people knocking down COs, having babies by five or six of them, you know, getting whatever they want. So it's like. Is, is 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 even if they go to jail, is that even going to be a solution? No, not not really. I think our justice system is just as bad. Um, it's it's a systemic issue from the top to the bottom, unfortunately. Um, I agree. I remember talking to a, one of a, a young adult, and he said to me, "I'd rather be tried by a jury of twelve than buried by six. Well, that, that's that's a logical thing. So, you know, I don't disagree I mean, with if that. you are sitting here trying to weigh your options, I'd rather carry a gun and protect myself. And if I have to kill somebody and I'll do that, then somebody kill me. And I yeah. think that's the mentality that a lot of our young people hold. They feel like, you know, they're in this, this, this jungle where, you know, you, it's like you eat or be eaten. Yeah, I mean, and, and unfortunately, though, you know, the culture that we have today, there are there is no line that we talked about. There is no there is no line of anything. You know, no one is safe. You know, I know I know people that are in college that are still in the life dabbling. And, and, and it's like today, you know, in college, you could have probably so we, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, sold this, sold that, 
you know, dib and dab, but today it just, it just seems to be so terminal and it's, it's no change. And you mentioned the systemic thing. What is the city of, what are the city officials doing to acknowledge this problem? Like I, I give Pew a little credit in the sense that um, she knows the issues. Mm-hmm. She's very clear on that. She's never shied away from having an opinion on the issues, but what plans are we really implementing? Um, none that I've seen recently, right. you right. know, that's, and I think that's a part of the problem, but I think this year has been a little different from previous years. Number one, our murder rate is ridiculously high. I think we are breaking records. What point. number are we at now? Uh, I know we're well gotta over, be over 300. 300. I know we're well over 300. I'm not sure. Gotta be over 300, man. 359? 309. Okay. We gotta be over 300. However, this year we've had some prominent members in Baltimore's society who had close loved ones murdered. Yeah. And as horrible as it sounds, it's it, it gives off the perception that you know, some one life is more valuable than the other. I see a lot of arguing back and forth today on Facebook in regards to the police officer and the um reward for the, you know, the, the person who killed him and and everything. But they're like, Well what about the three hundred and eight other awesome people? So it was a reward is a reward high or sixty nine thousand dollars. Wow. And so the thing is when it I mean, I get it. However, the the message that it seems to be being received by a lot of young people is that I'm not valuable. Well, you, you, well, it, it shouldn't take a. Uh, I get what you're saying in context, but it shouldn't take a, a murder reward to to have them feel that way anyway. But no, it's but, just not the reward. It's the resource that they're using. But to we investigate. we know that anyway. When we talked about the woman, remember when we had the show, and I said it's been a year since the woman in Roland Park was found right. dead and how they had all of the recruits out there. So and we, we know that. that yeah, I've, I've never seen I that. I haven't seen it happen since it. either. Haven't seen it happen since either. I haven't seen it happen. We, we don't it. see, we don't see recruits um, in the Academy canvas neighborhoods like they did when, when that lady was murdered and that was in the summer right. and they still haven't found her killer. Um, I think it's, I think it's interesting. I was looking at the documentary um, about the nun that was killed yeah. in the sixties or early 70s, rather, and, they, and, the, and the cop said, well, then the homicide detective said that they had 200 murders back then, which I found mm-hmm. very, um, I, I, don't, I didn't really understand that. But Baltimore has historically been a violent city. Oh, of course. I mean, going back to the 1900s and the lynchings and, and, and all kinds of things, um, even just with the war, 1812, just being right. violent. But right. I think war we, is violence. War is violence. Yes. I think what we're facing today, though, is just is just an epidemic. And going and segueing into that, um, Baltimore. Oh, before you before you go, go before you go, yes, uh, Marcella agrees with. I think it was Miss Pope. Uh, Maryland should allow us to carry concealed weapons, like in Texas or other southern states. Uh, the police need help, and the citizens are here but have nothing to protect ourselves with. Mm-hmm. Sad, the city has become a war zone. I had a discussion with a friend of mine earlier. Thank you for coming. And yes, Ms. Marcella, thank you for your comment. Um, and my friend was saying, you know, somebody has to police society. There has to be a police department. And mm-hmm. I'm saying to her, she's like, she basically said the police have lost control of the city and mm-hmm. they need to take back the streets. Mm-hmm. And I told her I beg to differ. I don't think that, you know, the police historic function is to police the the masses. Um, however, I think the community needs to take back its community. I think that people have kind of checked out. They've checked out of checking on what goes on outside of their front door. And that's partially because of fear. Yes. However, you know, we, we have lost a sense of community. We've become so individualistic and yes. we're just so worried about me and mine. Yes. That we have lost a sense of community. You used to take pride in your block. Yes. You used to, you couldn't cut up because your neighbor up and up the street, so you cutting up, they were going to tell your mother. Or they had permission to correct you then and there. Like, we don't have that anymore. And we kind of lost our neighborhoods because of that. I agree. You know, they p- completely run them up. And you might have had maybe a family that lived on the block. Maybe somebody was 
alcoholic or, you know, on something, but you had a neighbor who took care of you that made sure you ate, that made sure you went to school, right. whether, you know, your parents were on point or not. I think we've gotten out of taking care of one another. And it shows, like, people walk around literally completely unfazed by the fact that Murder. we have 309 some murders. Like, that's 309 families. That's 309 my that's mothers and fathers, multi multiply multiple that. Multiply siblings, that by five to six. friends, you talking children. You, you, I mean, this city is cloaked in trauma and, and, and it's so heavy that um, it's almost like, how do we even pull ourselves out of this? Because it's just, it's so much. It's, it's very, you know, multi-layered. Um, and I don't think it's any one answer. Boy. It's it's definitely um and you, you touched on it earlier, man. Is it's see I I've been frustrated from the sense that everything that you said is a hundred percent correct. I've been frustrated in the sense that we have such of we have such a disconnect in our people. You have the you have the people that know better that don't do better. Um, the people that know better that leave, and then you have the people that don't do better or don't know better, but but they're just doing worse and there's, there's no community. And then it's like, I just don't understand how a city this small, you can get around this city literally in less than an hour. You can get everywhere, you in, the get city everywhere in, like 20 minutes, in 30 minutes, no matter where you're from, which part you start. No matter from. where you go. <laughs> and a city this small, we elect the same people yeah. to do the same things. And we praise these city council politicians because they come out, they shake our hands, they kiss babies, and they get us these minor victories. I mean, I just don't understand how, as an elected uh, elected official, why are you not outraged? I mean, and I mean consistently outraged. Don't tell me one time you're pissed off. Don't tell me one time you, you, you know, I don't understand it. Because it's like, what are we preparing ourselves for? What are we really doing? Like I said, I think it's, it's, it's no easy answer. We're dealing, it's not, we're, we're dealing with a corrupt police department. But I don't. I, we're dealing with you know what a, I, I can't. A I gotta, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta stop you on that. I won't say that we because here's the other thing, and I'm not saying that that ethnicity den denotes whether or not you're corrupt. But there are a lot of people from this town mm -hmm. that live in this town that look like you and I that are on this force. Mm -hmm. You go to New York City, go to Brownsville. Go to uh, Queens. Go to Nassau County. Go anywhere. Nassau County and Suffolk County. See, people think of Long Island as this rich place, right? Long Island is very much like any other place. You have your rich people and you have your dirt poor people. You have your very violent places. And for a long time, Long Island was more poor in, in the poor areas than New York City. But you can't find, I can, I can count on my hand how many black officers you will find on Nassau County PD and Suffolk County PD. Mm -hmm. At least in this city, you have those instances where you have a brother that went to Patterson, that went to Dunbar, that, that grew up with you, that grew up with them. You don't, if you black at Nassau County and, and from Suffolk County, you can't even get in there. You can't crack the police department. Mm -hmm. So the police, the police, in theory, I do agree there is corruption, mm -hmm. but in theory, they're only doing what the police system was designed to do. When you had the first municipal police department in New York City in the 1900s, it was made up of Irish people that that uh, developed this this police system to protect themselves, but then get by and then do the things that they're doing. So it's doing exactly what it's designed to do okay. um, in that right, but it's not working in the grand scheme of things of what we want. Mm -hmm. But who then controls that? City council, the mayor, the representatives, and then the governor. The governor that we had for the last almost decade prior to Hogan mm -hmm. was mayor of the city, mm -hmm. left it in shambles, went to Annapolis, and didn't do a goddamn thing for it, and then had the nerve to get on a national platform <laughs> and run for president. Yeah, he really did. Had the nerve. In real life. Had the nerve. That, I mean, that's absurd to me. And, and no, it's not absurd. It's not no, shocking. It, it, it makes sense. It ain't shocking. He's a if, he had been, if, if, if Brown had been a more elusive city, uh, state, state, rather, mm -hmm. and had more electoral votes, mm -hmm. he might have made a difference. They might have picked him. I don't think anybody took him seriously. Mm -hmm. they Only because Brown ain't that big on the, in the big 
Maryland, as far as the Democratic Party goes, but she would have needed him. Yeah. She could have made him vice president. She could have made him VP. But he, but the, I mean, the, but but you know the crazy part, and and I, I I cut you off. The crazy part about the last uh, when Hogan ran the first time, it was funny how uh, asked me uh, union employees and reps would come to my house and they said um, vote for Anthony Brown. I'm like, you don't sound too enthused by that. <laughs> and like, yeah, I mean, because honestly, he's lieutenant governor. He ain't done a damn thing. He never comes to book. I, I promise you, this this white girl, I don't rem- <laughs> I don't know her name. She was about five ten. She's she was like, no, maybe she, she's shorter than that. But she brown hair, got out of her little car, and before she came to me, I said, stop. I know where you're coming from. I am a rep. She's like, yeah, I'm coming to your house. I know you are. Why are you here? She said, well, I'm, I'm torn. Like, she literally took this time to get therapy from me. And she said, I, I, I've been voting Democrat. I really don't know if I can trust Hogan, <laughs> but I just don't like Brown. He hasn't done anything. Has I don't know his policies. He's never been to the city. I'm sitting here looking at this. Like, I just she got off work before she could even get to my door. I'm getting out of the car same time as her. And I'm standing here like, wow. And it's funny because I don't know her from Adam or Eve, but I echoed the same feeling. I did. But you know the funny part about it? At the end of the day, you know what I did? I still voted for Brown. Why? Because he was Democrat. And, 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 and in my mind, you know, why keep voting for a party when I should vote for with the person, yeah, I think I definitely think that you know, if you need to be that. outside of your party, you do what I you got to do. It's the best candidate for the job, not who's in your party. When I saw Hogan, when I saw Hogan in Baltimore City during his race at mm-hmm. least 10 times, personally, I saw him. Mm-hmm. I saw Boyd, I saw Boyd at least five. T- I sat down and drank a beer with Boyd at Birdland mm-hmm. like it was nothing. He bought me a beer and everything. I can't tell you the last time I've seen uh, Lieutenant Brown when he was Lieutenant Governor. Or, or O'Malley in a Baltimore. A lot of people didn't even know he was. Concerned. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question before y'all before y'all leave from this. Mm-hmm. So, I, in theory, I understand what you're saying, yeah. but I can poke a lot of holes in. That's fine. You and do. so, so it's like, say you, you're a teacher for your child, right? Mm-hmm. Um, is an atheist, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and you are very religious. Would you want the atheist to teach your child? Absolutely. Why not? So it would make a difference to you? Absolutely. You would say it wouldn't it wouldn't make a difference. I'm not asking. What does your religious affiliation have to do with you teaching my child the subject of math? I don't know. I, I guess it depends reading. on the I guess I think I was expecting the question you to ask me to be it depends on what subject. No. So I, what if they were the what if they were teaching religion? I don't. That's still not a problem. I, I, but well, I'm, my kid is in public school, so no. I'm just. I, 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 I <laughs> no, but I'm just saying in this in this scenario, your kid needs to be taught religion. No, I don't think that would really matter. I actually know if. So you're is. assuming that I, that his policy, his, his or her policies would they would be neutral on what they believed and stick to whatever. I mean, as a teacher, you have a curriculum to follow. Right. It's not about what you personally feel. Like if you have a a certain belief that you feel like you want to teach, then you need to open up your own school, but you have a curriculum to follow. I know a few atheists that know the Bible better than some ministers that I know. Very true. And they're very highly intelligent. So I personally would not have a problem with that. You should never be You're saying your that own agenda. So the lady position. that came the lady that came to your house, was she working for a campaign? She was working she was a member of Ask Me, I never say it right. The state, um, state union, uh, for state employees. It sounded like she was a little confused. And no, no, I'm, I'm dead serious. And the thing is, she was representing the union, but the union had made their stance in the ground that for whatever reason, okay, until you, until I don't know if this is what you're alluding to, but for whatever reason, they, they dug in the ground that they were going to support Lieutenant Governor Brown. This is exactly what I'm alluding to. But, but why did you support? Lieutenant Governor Brown, who was in the same administration that didn't give you a raise you in over eight years, and then on the, on this man's last year out, this is how foul O'Malley is. And I promise you, <laughs> I feel this way, and I feel this way strongly. I see O'Malley on and, a regular basis. 
That's what's up. Because I, I want to meet him. You still live and I, I want to say something. Yeah, I see him on a regular basis. I Nobody say fucks with him like that. I, I want to speak to him <laughs> because I don't understand. I don't understand how for your entire term, you, while at the top, you collect all this money. This state is, is wealthy. It is. No matter how much they try to portray it, it isn't. The country's you, wealthy. Maryland, but Maryland, Maryland you go, wealthy. you if you compare to what our state employees get to other states, it's 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 trash. Maryland is one of the richest states in the country, and we and our state employees that represent them are getting nothing. But you leave here, right, and you go to Anne Arundel County and Howard County. The resources, the state funding is there. You see it. Mm-hmm. But how, O'Malley? You were the mayor of our city. You went. To Annapolis, you're supposed to go to Annapolis and and do dirt for us. Oh you're no, he, he did dirt. No, I'm saying you're supposed to do it in a good way for us. <laughs> oh, you know, give us some money that we weren't supposed to part. get. He you know, get some money for the city that you're not supposed to get. How in your entire term, you only gave us a raise one time, and on your way out, and you knew that whoever came in next didn't have to let it stick. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, a lot of Democrats I know want to get on Hogan. Hogan didn't have to honor that raise, and no. he did. Shout out to you, pimp. So, I, I so actually don't have many issues with Hogan. Oh, I mean, and that I, I, that's I, that's, I, that's why I was trying to circle to. But the lady that came to your house, it was supposed to be her her stance to support uh, Brown. Brown, yeah. She didn't do do that effectively because she didn't really believe it. Nope. Um, she a la teaching you religion, mm-hmm. but she wasn't neutral. She le- she was leaning confused mm-hmm. uh and and i'm sure that a lot of people she talked to were more confused after if they didn't have the st- say they didn't have more of a direct connection with the administration from seeing really paying attention to to the pitfalls of them and somebody just regular she i'm sure she influenced and other people like her influenced the vote so people don't always do what they're supposed to do yeah. right. based on that and and that's why i think it comes back to what what uh, party they belong to, or at least where they lean with your with their voting, I don't understand how. But we it's happened sometimes. We've had we've had Republican governors here that have done good jobs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Hogan. Yeah. And what was the other? Uh, uh, it was a long time before that. No, not mm-hmm. a long time. It was the a one long that, time the, before the, that. The, the one that approved the um stuff at Coppin. I can't his his name, but it wasn't that. Like it was within the last ten years or whatever. It had to be. It had to be at least ten to twelve years. Oh, yeah, I see his face. I yeah, and I, I see him all the time, but I can't. I can't think of it right now. But hey. but my point is, is that yeah, you got to judge people by their by, merit by their merits their because merit. people yeah. flip flop because because yeah. Trump used to be a Democrat. Well, Trump and Trump, and Trump, Trump used to be all hip hop and, and yeah, culture. So, and, absolutely, he still you, is. You gotta you have he to judge is. him by that. But those lifelong conservative types that. Are not good people. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. They are what we you know. They those are. are who they. You know, so you got some Republicans that's kind of moderate, and you can say, okay, he might be all right. But some of them, you cannot trust them. No, because they're all. Republican. Like who is um who is uh who ran for president with uh with Sarah Palin? McCain. 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 McCain is one of those that ain't that bad. <laughs> ain't that bad to me. But I mean, transitioning from that. I agree. Yeah, McCain ain't that I'll bad. Take over Donald. I mean, Donald. Like I said on the show. Would y'all take? Would y'all take Bush Junior back over? I, you know what? Surprisingly, I would. I didn't have no beef with. Listen, I gave, told I gave you the story how Bush and I and I. I will quote the great Dr. Richardson of Morgan State University, <laughs> who was the former president of Morgan State University. He said under Bush's administration. The uh Junior Bush the second Bush Bush. Junior the the civil rights or some some coalition that um looks into civil rights or something of that nature some some committee was more aggressive then than it ever was under Obama's term because he said the things that they were going through with the HBCU case versus state of Maryland Mm -hmm. he got a lot of that traction under that administration he said he couldn't even get anybody from Obama's administration to even bat an eye at it, really? you know, yeah. so, and then Bush, and th- you know, Bush invited a lot of, he loved baseball, he invited our, our city Little League to come down and kick it with him, you know, the dude was like, he sat literally next to me, just like Jennifer is, but just like a bleacher above, and just kicking it, man, like, you know, so I mean, at the game, 
drunk. Yeah, no, I mean, he was chilling. Ehrlich. Ehrlich was the governor. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. But I mean, yeah, you know, and, and I mean, you know what Trump Trump is Trump is a smart dude. You know, Trump is Trump is playing Absolutely. to the to the heartstrings of middle America. He's literally the biggest hustler out of New York City. He said it was an article somebody pulled up of him maybe like I don't know, fifteen years ago. Talking about he if he ran for president, he, he would yeah. run as a Republican. They said they're stupid. They he's they said they there have been um sources that denied that, that was actually true. But in theory, I mean, it's got to be true. He's the biggest hustler in New York City history. Yeah, he hustled the entire country. He did. Fat Cat hustle Queens, Supreme hustle Queens, Alpo hustle Harlem. Donald Trump hustled the entire country. He he hustled the people in Middle America. He told them, "I le- I, I hear your pain. I feel you out." And then he ain't done a damn thing for him. And now they even know it, and they still love him. And, he, and then he, after he leaves out of office, he's gonna write a book. Oh yeah, he already got it in the work. Be a number one bestseller. He already has a camera following him right now <laughs> for the reality this, this show. Documentary movie. Yeah, you can't. Yes. Yep. Honestly, you can't. And this is why people don't understand. They have a problem with the communistic way of thinking. And I get the freedom of choice and all of that kind of stuff. But when you when you have this opportunity, you have a man whose father was born in nineteen early nineteen hundreds. Born in the Bronx, New York, had a company that 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 supplied all of New York City. He passed down his riches to his son that was born in the 40s. They've been rich, right? They've capitalized on this richness, right? Mm-hmm. And now he's taking his outlandish abilities, his his idiocies, his everything to to capitalize even more. Now, now at the very minimum, he's a US president. So if he if all his businesses ever went bottom up, he still has the lineage to say, I'm going down in history. I got a lifelong pension. I got lifelong security. I'm, I'm secure. Yep. This is the American dream. This is what your America, your blood and soil, the, the blood and soil people want it. This is what you want. But when we say free health care for everybody, when we say take care of everybody, they don't want that. This is what you get. We ain't talk about, we ain't talk about city schools yet. You want to talk about Rachel? Oh, I'm gonna talk about Rachel. Like oh no, 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 that's not so spot. That's not so spot. Not for me. But I mean, segue <laughs> to segue into the uh, into the uh, ills of the city. Um, Baltimore City schools are are uh, suffering, to say the least. Baltimore City schools have been suffering for decades. It's um, but you went through the city schools. They, I did, and you but it's, made it's it. not. It's not really, really good at all. Got worse. But see, the thing is, when even though I, I came up through the, the school system, I had other outside entities that helped, mm. you know, shape my education. Um, I, um, we had like the gate program. We don't have the gate program anymore. I used to be in the gate program, um, and even then, once I got to high school, I was at I went to Morgan State Upper Bound um, program. Mm-hmm. Hey. Um, which, you know, definitely helped with the academics, you know. So a lot of the, and that program has lost a lot of funding over the years. It's a, that program has shrank tremendously. Um, so it wasn't just what I got from Baltimore City Public Schools. And then I had two parents that was in my behind about yes. the grades. So yes. that, that plays a part as well. But Schools have been, you know, failing for a while. I was just talking to a friend um, on on Facebook, kind of venting out. Mm-hmm. My sons have all E's. Which is excellent. Excellent, okay. excellent, excellent, excellent. Mm-hmm. One of my sons, he don't have all E's. He got, like, most E's, like, a couple of G's. Mm-hmm. Um, Shame. But then, they Shame. Have, but then they have a U in math. And I'm like, how? A U in, what is a U? Unsatisfactory. A U, unsatisfactory. And okay. math, how? So I go up to the school, both, and they're in two different classes. So I go up to the school and I talk to the teacher mm-hmm. and they had the same issue last year. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they've now initiated Common Core um, into the mm-hmm. school systems. But the thing is, the teachers don't even like it. And they are trying to think outside the box on how to get these students to perform on the test. And I said to her, I said, how does my son have a U? When I sit down and do his homework, he gets everything right. 
He can explain it back to me. What is he failing on? And she talked about the word problem. She said, to be honest, the tests are extremely hard. Mm -hmm. And it's not like fourth grade. grade. And my concern is this is this is kind of a pivotal point for a child in education, because if you don't grasp math and reading at about the fourth, fifth grade level, that kind of sets the tone for your academic career. Not true. Period. I didn't have so math down by fourth grade. Have <laughs> a, large, okay. a large um, number of children who are not meeting the bar. And math, you, why aren't you taking a step back and saying, okay, maybe we, we jumped the gun with this. Maybe we need to go back to, you know, the original way we, we kind of taught. What's the, what's the numbers like on the success rate of common I don't have the numbers, but I'm talking about just speaking to teachers mm-hmm. and other parents. It seems the children do not understand it. They don't get I it. Don't they don't get it. No, I, I don't. I had, to, I had to literally go into class like, listen, you got to explain this to me because I don't get it. Mm-hmm. Because when I showed them the way I learned math, they 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 get it, the but they learned. can't perform that on the test because it's oh, wrong in Common Core. So the actual correct math is wrong. What we correct what we us. know is correct. Yeah. Yes, correct. But not correct to the, to current you tests. Talk about, we count, we talk about count, math should be yeah. universal. Yeah. You know it's still the same. Right. Math the is the most universal the language ever. No, 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 and that's another thing. She's that the teacher was saying that children will never apply this in real life. This but but that's is- that's always been the case. I grew up in New York, where we we are a regent state, and every state in the in the union is not a regent state. Um, California, Texas, and us, and then some other states. And we had some some type of math that I, you know, it took me years and years and years to get um, that they don't even use throughout the country. Um, or, and I'm talking about the, the way that it's being done. Yeah. Um, but I mean, we're talk going forward. We're talking about 39 high schools in the city. Right. We're talking about high at the high school level. Yeah. And you're talking about fourth grade. Yeah. So 39 high schools. That's 26 out of 39. Let me tell you what's happening. What's happening is these children are not grasping the fundamentals of reading and math mm-hmm. at the elementary school level. However, due to no child left behind, being pushed these ahead. children are just being passed. First of all, we messed up when we made 60 pass, and 60 is not passing. No. 60 is still failing. But the thing is, yeah. now that that's accepted, you can literally have a 60 in all of your subjects, and you get promoted to the next grade. You so, did not master those subjects so, enough to get But we, we also do know that the other thing that we also do know is that while, in theory, Common Core kind of makes sense, if we were dealing with cars and not people, this is one thing I always say. If we're working with people and not cars, Common Core would work if we had an assembly line of cars that were all built the same way. Right. But we know that in urban cities, especially on the East Coast, there's drugs, there's violence, there's you got kids that I always said, like, how in the hell can this kid focus on algebra when he don't have he he has no way to heat up his own apartment. He doesn't take warm showers. He doesn't eat. She doesn't sleep. He or she sees or is being abused by someone else. So to the, to to support these teachers, and I'm not saying you're attacking them at all, except the person that gave your kid at you, that's bullshit. But um, <laughs> to support these teachers, they don't even have what they need, right? And then they're facing an uphill battle that's environmental. But you know the other problem is too. It also goes back to what I used to say about black excellence. We have so many people, like you said, they're so individualistic mm-hmm. that they only focus on money making professions. Not saying don't make your money, but we also need to start to understand our culture and start to say, son, you're not gonna be an engineer. You're not that smart, son. You're not going to be uh, whatever, or you might be, you know, but here's another profession. Look into it. I'm not saying you can't be one of these things, but here is the profession of social work. Here's the profession of being a teacher. You might be good at that. I'm not saying don't reach for the stars and don't make money, but the reality is we all grew up in a generation where people, everyday people were teachers, they were social workers, they were counselors. Because another problem is with this city, like many others, there are teachers here that don't live here. Mm-hmm. 
They don't have to buy in here. They go home to Anne Arundel County. They go home to Annapolis. They go home wherever they go. Mm -hmm. And they don't show any real investment to your students, to your children. That's a problem. Um, I don't know if I completely agree with that. I mean, I think that, I mean, you could say the same thing for the, for the police department. A lot of our police officers don't live here in the city of Baltimore. They all live in Pennsylvania, or <clears throat> Delaware, or whatever. I said the same thing. But the thing is, you know, I don't think that they're not invested. I, I've met quite a few teachers who are very invested. I mean, they mm. come out their pockets to get these children the supplies and things that they need that the city does not provide them with. Mm -hmm. um, and they, you know, try to, you know, think out the box to really get the children to grasp the, grasp the information. So, I mean, what, I what it, school are your kids you going to, to? I'm not going to say. Okay. I'm not going to say. But the thing is, you also have to realize that you have school, the schools are overcrowded, the classes are overcrowded. Number one, number number two, Baltimore City Schools are inclusion schools now. So before you had might have had two classes where you had some children who um, were taking a remedial level of of um, of the course, and you have an advanced level of the course. All of these children are mixed in together in one class, mm -hmm. and um, now behavioral issues is the biggest issue in the classroom. My son comes home every day and say, "Ma." They are too loud. They talk too much. And when they get to talking, the teacher is yelling. And when the teacher is yelling, everybody gets in trouble. He said, I couldn't yes. even go on. I get the it's same thing. It's one of those little sites that they use to learn. He said, we couldn't even get our Chromebooks out today because everybody was talking. This person started throwing stuff, blah, blah, blah. I get the same so, thing. Man, you have to manage the behaviors and teach the curriculum. That's on a daily but on, basis. On a, a lot. But see, my, I get the same thing. And then, you know, my, my kids' school is up and down. It's all different people. Um, but we have a lot of international teachers. And a lot of the kids, yeah, he, he said they're not teaching. Um, Hi, Chico. Yeah, Chico. Hey, Chico. He, uh, he dipped off, though. But um, they, my kids go to an international school where uh, their, their professors are, are not culturally used to this. Yeah. You know, one thing, I, one thing I've noticed that's a constant factor and you you could you could say it or not, man. We need to be honest. We need more black males in Absolutely. the education system. Absolutely. We need more black males in the education system. When I'm around and I see other black fathers around, this our presence is something different. Yeah. And and we need more culturally. See, the other thing is too. We need to we need to train these teachers a little bit better and support them a little bit better. I mean, just really. I mean, and then the other problem is too. That education, we know this as social workers, education and social service is the last thing funded in this country. Mm -hmm. It's the first thing they take money from, and it's the last thing funded. And it's the idea that if you build top, da top down, you'll be all right. That's the most asinine. It's still the trickle-down theory at, at, a, at, at play, and it never works. <laughs> you have to build the infrastructure of this country. If we not... If if we have this problem in Baltimore City, and we have this educational problem in O'Malley's, Maryland, that was supposedly number one in the state, I was just saying, how the hell can this man brag and boast about Maryland being number one in the nation, but your largest city is suffering? This is why I don't mess with you. When you don't build the infrastructure of your future, what are you going to have? True. So we're just going to have a bunch of rich dummies running around talking about STEM and they don't know what it is? We have some Baltimore City schools that have um, recently gotten some national attention. I know that Cardinal Sheen, which is a private Catholic school, um, their choir was on Ellen and the Today Show. And, and um, then I know City Springs Elementary School, which is in like the lowest impoverished neighborhood in Baltimore City. Where's City Springs at? Uh, that is on um, Lombard Street. Southwest? Yeah. Two, one, two, two, three. No, it's, no, 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 no. Southeast. Oh. It's not far from Dunbar, actually. Um, oh. The school, uh, the children have raised, um, I think it was like $1,000 in um, hurricane relief. And they're saying this is the the most impoverished neighborhood in the city. These children don't, I don't have know that the that's tools accurate. that they need to do anything. Yet they found a way and they really pressed on to try to raise money to Assist the aid and I don't know that's the poorest in the city. Um, well, that's what 
It's up it there. Was That's what they had but, said. That's what they said. Because because um, uh uh two one two two three Pigtown, but just uh Carrollton Ridge. But you also you know, you know when, when you have those shout out to my people down there. Those kinds of when you're living in those kinds of neighborhoods and you're played by the you know the social economical issues, mm. it um affects the education definitely. Now, Absolutely. City, actually, City Springs schools. Um, my grandmother was apparently a liaison there until her death. Wow. She actually went into Perkins Projects and helped out families Perkins to homes. do a whole lot of things. A lot of people knew her. A lot. Of, she would bring kids to her home. Mm-hmm. You told the story like before. She, she did a lot. You told the story community. before. That's but, dope. Um, you know, we we really don't I have, remember that. We don't have, listen, let me tell you, our opponent was one in a million. Yeah, yeah I remember you telling the her, story, yeah. But we don't have anything close like that either. Like, we yeah. don't have that that neighborhood mother, you know. We, Grandmama, we don't, we don't big mama. No more, you know, and I think yeah. that made a big difference. Absolutely. It made a, a huge difference. Absolutely. But, um, I mean, you do have teachers that care. I, Ellen was just talking about a teacher, I think his name is Mr. O. The kids call him Mr. O. He's a teacher mm-hmm. at City Springs Elementary School. Mm-hmm. And they talked about, you know, how he's the, I think, he was nominated for teacher of the year mm-hmm. and something like that. And, you know, he is a Caucasian male mm-hmm. in a predominantly black school who, you know, appeared by all accounts of, you know, what was on the show that he's going beyond the call of duty to yeah. educate these children. No, there, there is a lot. Do. There's a lot that care. My, my, my frat brother is a principal at a Calvin Rywell elementary and he just received an award and, okay. You know he's he's that's up there almost um, far as park area, and I mean he he's doing a lot. He has a, you know, but my but it, my, it goes back to the systemic problem that we have. Um, the the government just voted on trying to get more taxes cut from the seventy five k and below uh bracket. I mean this is this is the, just just the asinine behavior that Diamond K was alluding to. Why are we still voting these clowns in? And then it's like you and then at some point we have to look at our local and our state officials. Why are you standing for this? You know, when when Obama ran for president, that was probably the last time you would see our communities as galvanized as on one accord as it was. Yeah. You had the rappers making songs. You had everybody just on one accord. It was a wonderful time. We need really we need our elected yeah. officials to get back in the streets and do what they're supposed to do. Don't you know what pisses me off? When they have these town halls, they have these sessions around election time mm-hmm. that are set up and designed to make them campaign money. Mm-hmm. You should have these town hall forums. That's definitely true. You should have these rallies, these breakfasts, all these things. You should have this all year long to address the actual concerns. Don't show up at my community uh what is it? Community um community association meeting every now and then. You know, you live here. During you, campaign season. During campaign really season. When they show up. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Hold Definitely. on, let me let me let me do this. <laughs> Radio Fire broadcasts reach over two hundred and seventy six thousand viewers per month. Advertise your product, service, or event. On Radio on Fire by sponsoring an episode of the Speakeasy for as low as fifty dollars. Visit RadioOnFire.com slash promo to get started today. If you miss any episodes of the Speakeasy, visit RadioOnFire.com to watch on demand. Click Radio Shows and the name of the show, the Speakeasy, to watch any episodes that you missed. And you know what's That's funny? Right. You know what's funny about this script though? I, when I do it right, I normally say our show like last. I normally talk about the other ones. Like it's funny, and I mean, he just kind of like schooled me just now yes. directly. <laughs> He's just like, you got to talk about your the show. Speakeasy. No, no, no. But I, yeah. I took, I took it as a time. I took it as a point in time to big up the other shows. Cause I actually, you know, in between washing clothes. No, no, no. <laughs> we, no, but we, but we are. But I, I, I see. Look at. I have a community. That's sense why we got math thing. after the fourth I have, grade. I have a community. <laughs> I have a community yeah, sense of thinking, and I figure, you know, if I, I shout out other people, they, they're going to take care of us. But, you know, in between in between, in between, between spanking people at home, in between spanking kids, sometimes when they act crazy, wash clothes, cooking, I watch the other shows. 
You know, so I'm a fan. That's good. But you take your home. Well, we'll if, if, well if love if you, if love would have brought you home when we, you wasn't in Vegas. Look. You should have been with me. Mama got <laughs> in the life Anyway, moving on. Should have been right by right. my side. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. You <laughs> foul. That's right. But I wanted to talk real quickly about our good friend, Rachel. Uh, she got to be all good. Friends. Dolezal. This woman is. Delusional. She's crazy, man. <laughs> she's crazy. I mean, she got a book out there, The you Color of Me, or something like that. We live in a society today. Ah, uh, I know what you're gonna say. Where you can be right. whatever mm. you. Want. If I walk in here with a whole body of blue paint, and I tell y'all that I'm an avatar. You can't tell me different than I'm not an avatar. Yes, we and might. I will go to yes, we might. lobby and go scream at the top of every hill and pass every law. And so Diamond K, Diamond K, Diamond K and the Silent Kick, Diamond K and the Silent Killer Nikki will tell you different. Both of them will. Yes, if I don't, they I will. will. Fight Tifa Nair to tell you I'm a damn avatar because I am blue. And I did. You think I was like an avatar? <laughs> so are you saying that society is just letting people just do whatever they want to do? I think we kind of just letting it rip. I mean, I agree. Listen, I it's, agree completely. It's like, look, <laughs> I agree completely. They like, you know, women are like, oh, I want to be in the fraternity, and oh, I want to be a boy that wants to join the girls. I, I want to join the girls' scouts. I want to play like, girls basketball. Like, yo, dude, if you are, if you know you were born, now they call this cisgender if you yes. identify with being a male in mm -hmm. your birthright look dude if you were born a male and you go to play women's sports you're cheating you're straight up cheating me like you cheating you have biological advantages you have I, scientific I biological advantages yeah. man you cheating but i'm good but, but see the thing is with, with rachel she you can <laughs> tell her she not a black woman what if she, she just caught the holy ghost she, listen she is channeling the inner spirit of somebody. She she has an excerpt in her book that says that as a little girl, and this is where she's pushing it, and this is where I, I haven't cursed a lot this whole show, but this is where she's on some bullshit. She's saying as a little girl, and I'm paraphrasing, as a little girl, I took mud. I took mud and dirt, and I rubbed it on my legs and on my arms and on my face, and then I felt over some some bullshit. I don't know. She basically glorified. She basically glorified her own self, black face from mud as a child. See, I just I I, I took something completely different from that. So you you feel like we dirty? No, you like that's why are you putting dirt and mud on you know what no, never mind anyway listen mm -hmm. she well, said then. recently the article that you posted in yes. the speakeasy group yes we do yes. have a group on facebook called the speakeasy go ahead and send us a request um yes. you said on the post that she, when she said in the article that you posted that she was too much of a black woman for, for her husband, husband. Yeah. You need me. You need, you need me to repeat that. I can repeat it. She don't said, go yet, "Don't go there yet. Don't go there yet." She, she, she said she was too much of a black woman for her husband. I want to know: Did her husband believe he was marrying a black woman, or did he think he was marrying the Caucasian woman that you were born? Like, did you did you fill him in on this? Like. Just let me know when I can go. She probably would say she's always been black. As long as she knew him. All right. So, so is it? So is it the problem? Is it the problem? And you're here with me because you already said it. Is it the problem that one, she's perpetuating something that's stereotyped about being a black woman being too strong? Is it two that you know she's not black and she's pep she's faking on that, or is it three? That black women actually say neither one they too strong. None of the none husbands. of the three. I, let me tell you my opinion. And we got to get to what? mental health and relationship trauma. But okay, y'all can't be <laughs> mad at Rachel. Let me tell you why. Y'all can't be mad at Rachel on one away. hand, and then on the other hand, y'all accept Bruce Jenner. As Caitlyn. Excuse me. Who who accepts Bruce the Jenner? The people. There are people that accept 
Bruce Jenner as Nikki, Caitlyn. Nikki, when I said this, one, you get, if you want, when I Bobby, said this about Bobby, his, his young rap crushes, the young thugs and them type people, oh, I said Lord, you can't be Bruce mad. Bruce. At them for go, dressing yeah. and acting crazy not, not and it's supporting them and all of that. This is the thug. same yeah. argument. You can't be mad I, at Rachel and then support Bruce. We've you been can't talk about yeah. Young Thug for like a you month. Can't. You can't. But it's different. Young Thug You're is different right. because we're not talking about we i I'm talking about the identi- the adopting whatever you want to identify yeah. right? as. Yes. Uh-huh. Young Thug is just hustling people and Listen, and, and, and Young Thug and, is and bad. I don't want you Young Thug is bad. Great line. I don't want you to be misconstrued. I'm not mad. And Rachel. And yeah, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not. I mad think she's. But if you she kind, says, you kind of worry If she bit. says, if she says she identifies as black, uh-huh. mm-hmm. then we and we and we can't be mad at that on one token, and then accept people born as boys who say that they identify as women, they're mm-hmm. girls, or and they are, or they say, oh, but his whole life he was feminine. But you could be good. anything you want to be. But that's that, that takes you could be anything you want to be. Comment. You can be whatever you want to be. But isn't that the American dream? See in Russia, Russia, <laughs> Rachel would have got Rachel would have got flogged like you are black. She would have got vodka porn porn on her. She would have got flogged in Russia. But I mean that that, that <laughs> they, there was something in her that she did not like what she saw about who she was, and it's it's almost you know flattering. flattering. Mm, yes, that you okay, feel that okay. you want to be a black okay. woman. I mean, who okay. don't? We don't be shit. So you know. I mean, we, we the see white the delegation so center. I understand why you want to be a black woman. I understand why you want to Facts, wear, Rachel. even, you know, do what the things that Facts. you do. And, and no. Listen, Ray Lewis no. has a medical condition. No. He has CTE. How many times do we have We're not going to use CTE as an okay. excuse. No, Cut the he nonsense. Really does. Cut the nonsense. He is Sick. Cut the nonsense. CTE. Sick. First of all, first of all, CTE is, is still very. They, it's still very rare. They don't know what it is. Listen, let me say. No, no, what no, Ray Lewis. Did, what no, Ray Lewis did, has. No, what Ray Lewis has is called uh, Jangoism. Uh, you know, look, he 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 is massa Monsieur day, Candy. Listen, Monsieur the other day Candy. we were run, we were watching. Um, my son plays safety, so I said, yeah. you know, um, I'm gonna show you some video clips of mommy's favorite safety. Ever. And Reed, like, absolutely. Don't tag. He didn't tackle though. So we looking on YouTube. You want to show him how to hit? Show him Sean Teller. Seeing clips of you this know Reed. That's why. And Dennis said, that's why I need to advise you. That's why I need to advise you before you do this. Dennis said Ray Lewis. So we start looking at the clips of Ray Lewis, and we were just looking at the hits this man delivered. I said at the end, I was like, there is no way this man don't have CTE. You can. But, I want him to get a PET scan. But here's the thing, like, CTE. Today. But here's a here's the reason why I'm telling you, CTE is not. A good example because there are people throughout time like you got Len Swan, you got all okay. these, you got all these different people that that played the game way more violent with less equipment, with less yeah. rules, and they're fine. Like the Aaron Hernandez, no, no, they 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 haven't done any, they haven't done any of the things like like they like okay, Junior Seau, right? They put CTE on Junior Seau so early, but they mm-hmm. we neglected the stuff that Junior Seau went through. We talking yeah. about Aaron Hernandez. Aaron Hernandez lost his father in high school, right. he had a lot of and at that point in yeah. time, he started wilding out. Yeah. Nobody wants to say how the state of Connecticut failed this kid. You know what I'm saying? It's not a connection, but what I'm saying is, until you Ray rule Lewis, it out, I'm, until you rule it I'm out, ruling it out you for you. Ray I'm Lewis, it's not Ray you. Lewis. Ray Lewis has Monsieur Candy syndrome. He has Monsieur Candy, just like Samuel Jackson was. It's Ray Lewis. You know he's gonna protect the brand. He's gonna get that money. We're gonna get that, that bag. Finish talking about Rachel. Uh, Rachel, if a mac and cheese is good, I mean, moving. On. Might reconsider. We're not, we're not doing this. We're not doing this. All right, all right, all right. So, what is going on in Hollywood? We got all these. Wait a minute. Pieces. Wait a minute. How many? It's been like three to. It's been like three shows in a row. Okay, at least two of them I'd have done without you. Now I'm gonna talk about Hollywood, and you haven't been here to support. Last week I talked about Kevin Spacey. All right, Stella. I'm just saying Kevin Spacey, uh, Louis C.K. Black. Terry Crews. Well, Terry Crews got raped or fondled rather. Terry Crews. That's that's just ridiculous. Let's let's touch on that because men. No, no, it's not much to say about Terry Crews getting fondled. I'm gonna tell you why. He's 6'5", 250 pounds, violent NFL player can defend himself from the hood. You shouldn't let your balls get grabbed, bro. Period. 
I'm not supporting. Did he hit the guy? I didn't hear that. Nope, not nope. nope. He knew who it was. He knew it was though. He knew it was though. That's not. But he didn't say nothing about it till later. What I was gonna, what no, what I wanted, what I wanted to touch on is the fact that you know, I saw a diagram talking about rape culture, right? And it got um. And, I, and it, it was posted, and we had a, a discussion about it. And somebody chimed in and said, this is so sexist because it says boys will be boys. It's a part of the, um, uh, a trajectory that goes upward. <clears throat> and they were like, men get raped too. Yes. So by I wanted men, to – I wanted to, both. No, by women. I wanted to touch on that because um, I also had a good discussion with someone, and they were like, yeah, I, when I was in college, I got raped. Was and this a man? And, and it was a guy. Wow. So it was like, you know, it it, wow, it does happen, but men don't report it. Men don't talk about it. Or they don't even they don't even view it as rape. And another thing, going even into your 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 early stages of your first sexual encounters and experiences. I hear a lot of guys talk about I had it was an older woman. Yes. It was an older it was a friend of my yes. sister or something like that. Shout and, out to Claire. And you think that, you know, it it <laughs> My bad. <laughs> they attribute it into you know their masculinity and stepping into their manhood. No, that was child molestation. But how that many was times are we? That's never normal. It's not. It's not something that should be boasted about. But however, men have that frame of mind where mm -hmm. you know this is was me stepping into my manhood, like it's okay. But if we flip that and made that a man doing that to a little girl, it would be a whole police. Uh, because it's law. different. It, but how um, many times have we? Different. How many times have I come on the show, and I reported that in Oklahoma, in Iowa, in this place, the teacher smashed we about the two teacher. to three we boys. Did. It's the same yeah. thing. It, 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 it happens a couple. It, it, it happens it's a lot of times. But boys and girls are different, and 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 no matter how much we try yeah. to blur the lines, uh, th you know, thing. If your husband makes you take out the trash, mm -hmm. like, oh my God, you take out the trash and you do it. That's not normal. That's nope. not right. No. And so there's certain there's certain things. Just like we said that the the the, the boy can't play with the girl sports because biologically we're she. different. There are things that are different. And, and when she. we uh, emasculate <laughs> men and like you know men got raped by women or unless they tying you down and whipping your ass with something why is that emasculating because there's a there's a thing there's a thing that you ladies don't sometimes understand sometimes understand it's called a male ego okay. and a male ego it's fragile it's fragile <laughs> and it goes along with the masculinity so it's like black like this is a black community let me just give an example Black women will say, well, I want a strong black man. I want a man that's going to take care of me and lead the way. But the first moment that he tries to, you tell him you don't need him or need his advice. That is a play on his masculinity. You ain't my father. You ain't my father. My father. Just, I swear, I'm just having a con this, this conversation I had with my girlfriend earlier. And we talked about how I had a friend that said black women – we completely mess up our sons. We do it. It's Word that do it. up. I think and you do a good job, that, but know, I have seen it. We make them very passive. Bitch -like. We spoil them, and we don't prepare them to be men. Right. Um, and then you also don't prepare make them, them scared for of other bugs. women. So, you also don't prepare them for other women. What? So what you I, don't need no other women. I'm all you got. I'm all I'm you not got. You say that. But I've seen... But, but, you see, but, you, but have you seen the post? Have y'all seen the post of women that would be like, oh, here's my Valentine's Day date. Mm -hmm. This this my man in the house. And yeah, I don't need nobody be the, else. It'd be the, the child. It'd it be the, their king son. Or they, or it'd be whatever, son. They, yeah. they king. That's my king. Like, no, that's your son. That's your prince. Yeah. He don't run this. Now, you do a damn good job. I always say that. You do a damn good job. And you invite, you invite other... You invite the coach. You invite... Minty, you invite friends that you know are positive to say things to your kid because you you have adamantly said this. I ain't no man. No. But there's for every one of you, you are an avatar though. You are an avatar. For every one of you, there's about 30 others that be like I was gonna I was gonna no say I, my, my sons work, you know, they play 
sports. Holy dirt. And when their coach shout out holy dirt. My bad. Go ahead. THD web. Chill out. Um but you know, football season is over and they're about to start running indoor track and they're working with a, a nice. track coach that is very strict. He yes. has, you know, he he has a method that he works with. But and sometimes you don't always he like it. He doesn't baby them. And sometimes you don't it always like it. It is completely you know it I can't even <laughs> describe yeah. the inner feeling of having to sit back and watch it, but I know it needs it's to good happen. for them. I know it's necessary. Amen. But you know, I think as make them run to the throw up. I think it's kind of we we're just put in such an awkward position because you know when you're you're a single mother and you're raising a, a man child, you are in a position where you kind of try to apply both roles, but you can't. You're not equipped to. No. So you got to kind of still be stern and hard and try to teach your son, you know, certain life lessons or whatever. However, you're working against your nature. I'm a nurturer. Mm-hmm. I need to be the one to hug my son and give him that love and, and everything. By nurture, you, you mean baby him. You should have that balance. By nurture, you mean baby both, them. You, if you don't have both of, you know, the stimulus is there. Correct. And I got to do both. Yeah. You know, it, it kind of throws everything but, off. But you know but something, I'm, too? But that, I'm grateful but for But you know, the, you know the something, influence. too, that also works in, in the inverse. Because as a man, you know, and I have daughters, you know, when I feel like I always have to be the disciplinarian, it, it weighs on me because I don't know if I'm yeah. going too far. Right. I don't know when to give in. I don't know when to, you know, be their homie. So it, it, it you do need a strong balance. And I always give you credit for that because I know a lot of single women. I know a lot of single mothers and not many are able to get the bigger picture that you get. So I'm always giving you credit for that. And I think that's dope. Yeah, I have community children, so my children cutting up in the streets, correct them. <laughs> um, you see them being out of line, do what you need to do to get them back in line. I'm all I'm here for it. I am a, I am the product of a, being a community baby. Yes. You know, so yeah. But getting back to the to the rape culture, you were talking about now I can I can tell you straight up, like, um, yeah. I mean, it is a societal difference. I, I don't understand why how these young teachers are getting caught. I've said that before. Um, I also wanted to know. Keep nothing to themselves. So. I also wanted to know where these That's teachers were when I was in school. Um, been, most likely, student? most likely. You, you think you would have achieved it? I'm just saying. I don't know, but I will say that as a youngin, uh, we, me That's and me and my cousin. Me and my, but you know what? They call that the Lolita <sighs> syndrome, though, right? That's the Lolita syndrome. That she is. Uh, hey, Lolita got a syndrome. Yeah, I believe there's a Lolita syndrome where I she's right she's now. very adulting and she's pursuing this man and mm-hmm. she's doing that. She's about that life. We don't know where it comes from. I don't think they have any explanation for that. But as a society, men are portrayed to be that like like you said that is a part of our our dominance that is the mufasa to simba Mm -hmm. moment you know and i remember uh my cousin and i you know having that that happen you know um that i knew about when i wasn't at his house and when he wasn't at home you know there's an older lady that used to you know holler at me um even in high school you know knocking down somebody way older than me um, I didn't think nothing of it, and I think because of the physical aspect, I think that gets overshadowed because it's always the perception that if we wanted to, we could leave and we could defend ourselves. Hmm. Um, so I think that plays a lot into it too. I didn't really watch that whole movie. That was really cool. Tell you the truth. Watch that. It was amazing. I watched it. I didn't really I watch a, it. Derek, uh, Derek Lou was overacting. Pray. What's his name? Derek no Luke. One Derek is, Luke. He was overacting a little bit. He killed me a little bit. I pray to no one, you know. I, I can't even fit. Mm. <laughs> with, with your boys? Just, just don't. Well, with the other thing, with the other thing but, about that, he was a foster child. Yeah, and, yeah. you know. It was a lot of other things. A lot of well, other factors. The thing is, I think, like, you know, same way we protect our girls, we definitely need to protect our girls. And, and shout out to you because let. Let most women tell it. I'm telling you, when we when we hear when we have these kind of conversations, 
immediately women get on the defensive. Yeah. When they, they talk about rape, they talk about rape culture, it only comes from one avenue. Yeah. And I always say this, if you don't have sons, you're going to be very blinded to the reality. And you have, and you might not have always been this way, but you have no choice because you got two boys. You have to see it the other way. Yeah. And I commend you for that. Shout out to you, Stella. Thank Stella Pope. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so one of the, the things I wanted to point out on this diagram that uh, that I came across about rape culture is this new thing called stealthing. Do y'all know what stealthing is? Not at Never all. heard of stealthing? So stealthing is when you consent to having sex, you're in the the act of having sex and you start off having protected sex with a condom and the male removes the condom during the act of having sex without your consent or knowledge. That's called stealthing. So this is a psycho. I almost dropped my damn drink. <laughs> I heard that. Almost dropped, almost dropped my damn drink. Psycho. And hold up, excuse me. Men do that too. Just want to throw that out there. But anyway, so in talking about stealth, and this is now, I think they believe it, I believe they just passed a law now that makes that a form of rape. And you can now be prosecuted. I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Because it's about lack of consent. If you started off having sex and then would you agree that you're going to use protection? Well, what if y'all didn't have a conversation about it? At all. So because a lot of times, I know y'all want to. I know a lot of times women act like holier than thou. Yes. But you've been there. Yes. How many times? Yes. I can't even count how many times. It's over half. About to come for yes. That, Bring it. Come on. What? That sex we starts. We don't know. Y'all uh -huh. don't know whether we did whatever we did. Uh -huh. Because it ain't y'all in the moment. No, 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 no. Let me, let me, let me clean that up. Okay. Let it, let it be known that we know we about to do it. Right? Exactly. Definitely. You, That's you consensual. The, you haven't asked whether or not I have a condom it ain't or come not. Up. The and didn't you, come you, up. you obviously ain't stopped me to that point. Yes. And I'm in there now. Yeah. Whoop. So you didn't know whether Whoop. it was on. I'm in or there off now. Or nothing. So in the back of your minds. You know, you might not have cared in the moment. I'm not perpetuating that that's everybody how they feel. But I, I believe I that when that guilt, point, if once that guilt that sets in, at, yeah. you know how you had that guilt sets in after the Damn, I just smashed fact. him without a comment. Right. I just met him. Yeah, now all of a sudden, oh, you want to try to let, correct to a, the, the, the information a, that you put in the, on the invoice. Issue, fellas. Why are you smashing him without a comment? Why are you letting me? And especially if you just met. Why are you letting me? But no, it but, happens. So if it I'm happens. allowing you, you don't think that puts up a red flag like this? You know, too easy to let me. Like, but you see, you, Dama K, you know what I've noticed on your shows, and this is a repeated thing. When we bring up something from the male perspective, the question always somehow comes back to us. We know we foul. Smoke screen. We yeah. know we foul. We know exactly what we're doing is foul. How does it always come back to the point that? What kind of man are you for you to do Listen. that? Wait a minute. We know we foul. What about you? That's why we're different. Listen, you, you, but you described a completely different situation from what I said. Stuff no, you did. you did. You did. I don't think we did. No. I think she. It I, is I think. I think she. It is she gave the white picket no, fence version of sex. No, but that's hello. What are you doing? It. I'm not doing anything. Come over. Bring a that's condom. The, that's we the sit legal down. Definition. We know we're getting ready to use a condom. Correct. Correct. I do know. Let's engage in intercourse, and then y'all start intercourse. <laughs> Wait a minute. Are you removing the condom? Sex don't work like that, especially drunk sex. It doesn't. There ain't no conversation. It Sometimes it's like the conversation don't have until the next day. Well, listen, yeah, whether true. it works. Like, did you whether, come to me? Hello. So, no, no. See, it's what it happened head. was. Whether it works like that or not, this is now a law. So men, males, I to be very, law. very in tune with laws and when they're made and when they're, you know, enacted. So mm -hmm. people need to know about this because I think men, you know, Y'all put yourselves in some real iffy situations. We, men, unless we talk about men having sex with other men, that means the person that they having sex with is putting themselves in a bad situation too. That's my point. It could, it could be. But the thing is, like I said, with this particular instance. I agree with thing, this law. I agree with this law. No, I'm not, if, I'm not, not saying you don't disagree. What I'm saying oh, no, I'm is, just saying I do. This is a situation where the, the, there is some type of consensus in the beginning that mm -hmm. this is what's going to happen. You're going to have protected sex. 
This is and if we had that. During yes. sex, the male takes decides the to take the condom. I agree with and that. Not notify the female. I agree with that. that. This is the specific instance we're talking about. What I agree you with that. Kind of talking about that's not Stelson. But what we're talking about, actually, we're speaking more to what might have happened commonly in our experience. Mm -hmm. But I do agree with this law. So I also say this. This goes back to what I preach to my mentees. Get contracts, get taxes, get documentation that she's letting <laughs> you hit it. Because what happens then, or what should we call it then, when we're in the act of sex mm -hmm. and they feel bad or mm -hmm. whatever the reason is. Because here's the thing. I understand that when you could be doing it, no means no, and you have to stop. But the reasons that you're doing it, we don't know. Mm -hmm. And you're engaging us in sex. I think this should be, I don't know if a law, but there should be conversation about that. Absolutely. Should be because a lot of people, it. because a lot of things can happen from that. Well, a lot of times, you know, adults are having sex and they're not even having discussions about sex. That's the problem. No, that's a fact. That's that's called living. That's called roaring twenties. God damn it! But it shouldn't be. <laughs> that's a dangerous time to be living, in, especially with these kinds of laws. Yeah, so you definitely have to be proactive and make sure that you know you're on the same page. Yeah, I mean that. that but the thing, goes but saying. it's all about consent. It's about consent. Right. Like the, if the woman does not consent to have unprotected sex, you should. Okay. Not take Here's the other control. thing. But this is what Don K was saying is that. I've been in situations where I remember in college about to have sex. I don't have a condom, but she's welcoming the sex anyway. Mm -hmm. But I'm stopping, and I literally ran floor to floor to floor, banging on my homie's door like, yo, who got one? Who got one? Who got one? You know what I'm saying? So in that essence, I mean, we're just saying not that we disagree mm -hmm. that that doesn't always happen. So I guess the moral of that part of stealthing, you need to have the conversation with people that you're going to have sex with. Prior to and then if you're getting drunk and you're doing all that other crazy stuff, also understand that you're making yourself vulnerable, men don't, and women. Listen, all I'm saying is don't be on the next episode of SVU. Get, SVU get, is just SVU get clarification. Is, SVU is just out of this world. Get consent ahead because of time. did you ever see the episode with a piano teacher? Rape the well, no, the piano teacher's mother or sister raped the girl with a blunt object. Yeah, no, yeah. And I think I've seen every. I thought I saw nah, every episode. Nah, it was it was a piano like teacher. Hate. She had a history or whatever. The little girl got killed. Whatever. Her her sister like raped her with a blunt object because they used to get raped. It was wild, man. But speaking of that, that was a, that was an instance of hurt people hurting people. So we oh, talking actually. about trauma. Trump. Let's let's talk about let's talk about let's we at eight thirty. Let's go in about mental health and relationship trauma. Okay, I'm gonna let you take the lead on that because you 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 sent that to me. I know I could speak on it. I could go all day. Um. Yes, mental health. You know, mental health is anything that can affect your mood, your thinking, your behavior. Mm -hmm. Um. And talking specifically about relationship trauma. So when you have romantic Ooh. relationships and, you know, they end and you have a lot of um, unpleasant uh, instances throughout the relationship that leaves a, a, it leaves a toll on you emotionally, it leaves a toll on you mentally. Physically? Um, and physically sometimes, yes. Sometimes physically as well. Um, how uh how do we deal with that you know and and just dating and continuing to date i mean socially you know you want to try to connect with someone in in a romantic way mm. however um think just dealing with your past trauma from your past relationships can kind of prevent you from doing that um it can so, kind of so change when, the way when you, you say when you say your uh, your past trauma i got to ask you just for clarifying, because you're starting to go in on the, on the expert tip. When I'm having relationship trauma, am I talking about I used to date Nikki? She broke my heart because every time on a Monday night she would say she was going to the to the want a sip and paint, but she was <laughs> sipping and painting <laughs> with some other dude, and okay. now I'm traumatized. Is that what we would clarify or? 
that every time that I I went to go to work, she would scream at me or he would scream at me or, you know, do things. Is that what we're talking about with relationship trauma? See, the thing with trauma is it's subjective. Okay. There's no concrete definition mm. for trauma because what we can both experience this exact same thing. Yes. And it, you can have an adverse effect and it might not affect me in the same way. Correct. So... I might be in a verbally abusive relationship, mm -hmm. but we might take jabs at each other, mm -hmm. you know, and it might not, you know, it might roll off it don't my do back. nothing to you, but, but it, it, it crushes my nothing, world. Nothing, but you, crushes it, me. it completely damages your self-worth. My psyche, um, my masculinity. You start to, you know, say these things to yourself over and over again. Yes. You start to really believe it and becomes your reality. So it yes. depends on each individual person. You kind of define your own relationship. Trauma. Now, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, each relationship is, is rainbows and glitter and gold. You know, you do have some bad things that happen in, in, in within relationships, but I'm talking about these things that occur that completely change the essence of your being, completely change how you move in the world, completely change your outlook on the opposite sex or same sex um, or whoever you um, decide to date. It it kind of changes your narrative of how you maneuver within a relationship. And I think that um, we talk about the disconnect that um, we have with one another between men and women. Um, specifically. specifically black yeah. men and women? Specifically black men and women. Um, but trauma, trauma completely changes you physiologically as well. Um, it's not just mental. Trauma completely like can damage neural pathways in your brain, and it completely, you know, um, has an effect on your frontal cortex that um, deals with, you know, impulse control, Absolutely. emotion, emotional regulation. So those things, you know, are um, important. And you know, your brain doesn't fully develop until you're about. 21, 22 years old, something right where on that. My brain was fried by really that. <laughs> so just consider you dating young. Let's say you start dating at like 12 right. or 13 and your brain is still developing and you're going through these highly emotional um, issues mm. in these little, I can't call them little, but these relationships you have as an adolescent or pre-adolescent. And it's kind of, you know, creating your narrative mm -hmm. for your dating life um that carries on into adulthood and a lot of times we don't talk about it we don't you know really deal with it and you know like i said we carry it into adulthood and it just further the furthers the, the relationship trauma so so now that we have a breakdown of relationship trauma and relationship trauma is not ignorant to any mood any uh any gender any culture no Talking about relationship trauma, I have two things that I wrote down. Um, first was respecting and learning others' trauma. You you can read that. Don't <laughs> don't play me. And the other one was disconnect between black men and black women. When talking about relationship trauma, I believe that aside from many other things. I believe that that is the biggest problem between black men and black women today. I agree. I agree. think about it. You ain't got to rush. No, you seem I hesitant. I don't. I'm not. It's something that you know has been talked about in depth. Ad nauseum. <laughs> we talked depth. about it ad nauseum. Um, never in this. Never in this context. Right. Because usually we were at the bar with twenty, thirty people. And like, and we literally would see the trauma unfold, and then people. Yeah, like it just, you just that see was it happening crazy. Right <laughs> Yo, that would you be crazy. Right you be like, damn. Do you like, he calling, that? he just called her his ex. <laughs> she just blamed him like that was her baby father. And then at the end of the day, we intervene. And then they be like, oh, I get you. I get you. You know what I'm saying? Well, what's up with the night? But they ain't getting there. I you think know. They, they touched on it with the Love Languages book. Yes and no. Uh, but I said touched on it. Yeah. Touched on it. Because yeah. we had to figure out how the other person loves we have yes. to figure out their language we have to yes. figure out how they interpret language and how they give it back to us yeah um i don't i think those things are assumed and that 
kind of starts yes. to kick off the disconnect. Yes. Because we just assume that you yes. love like this. And we assume that yes. when I tell you this, this is how you're receiving it. And that's yes. not always the case. So once again, communication is key. I think that um as 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 um African Americans, we've had uh a lot of um trauma trauma yeah um you know i hate to kind of draw everything back to slavery but that, it, it does it plays such a huge role it does in the our behavior even today yes and trauma it can even be generational it, yes. it can be passed on um from generation to generation but when you had such constructs to dismantle the family unit Yes. To have, you know, the woman completely go against the man and have the woman had to have to step up to be stronger than the man. You have so many instances where the man was belittled and he was no longer the um the head of the family. Um, even when you look into African cultures, I'm speaking before slavery, um, you know, you, you, you had a, a there was a level of respect. There was a, a um hierarchy. A hierarchy. It was it was a methodology that we had. And you know, slavery completely broke that. Mm. Um, but when you, and I was reading something about uh, back breaking. I think that's the term that they use. Yeah, it's um, buck breaking. Buck or, breaking. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. So even when you had, you know, our men come over here and being enslaved, and they fought, you know, oh, against the that. enslavement, you had them, you know, being raped and ridiculed and everything else in front of their women. So you know it. It, it it goes pretty deep. It goes pretty deep. So I mean, you have where you know there's a, a great mistrust. I mean, you have a we're in a place where there is very hard and difficult for women to not be strong because that's what they've had to do for so long. Um, you have a difficulty with men trying to reclaim their their masculinity, their strength, and their place with a black woman to rebuild the trust. I think that the mistrust um between men and women in, in relationships is is great just because of the history. But at some point as a couple you have to get to a point where you're trying to move forward. You're trying to rebuild and repair and heal from it. Um, but it's not even recognized. So until you get to the point where it's even recognized that, you know, you have this disconnect, that you have this issue, that you have this trauma, it's very hard and very difficult to actually move forward. So, you know, we're in a place now where dating in 2017 is difficult. I have a friend who always asks, how is the dating life? What is going on in the dating world? And it's always at least 50 comments on his threads about the difficulties in dating and how I see the women play games, men need to grow up, blah, blah, blah. It's always it's, adversarial. It's, yeah, we always put a, against one another. And like I said, until we get to a point where we can recognize each other's trauma. trauma. And that's, that's my thing, how we, respecting how and we, learning others' trauma. How we need to approach each other in the way that we love one another. And learn but, that, and it's and it's bigger than it's bigger than it's bigger than it starts individually because it's bigger than a societal or cultural thing. If I get with you, right? If I get with you, and you say, "Now you're a very mild mannered person." Now I also know that you have a temper, <laughs> and that you have a short fuse for BS. But if I get with you. And you might be short tempered, you might have you might be a high head, but you're also very discreet in how you go about things. If I get with you and I'm all rah rah and you like that's traumatic for me. Mm -hmm. I don't like a rah rah man. Mm -hmm. If I ignore that, that's my fault. If I'm a man and I tell you I don't like space. I don't like getting in an argument with you and then you saying we need space mm -hmm. and then you don't communicate with me. We have to, as individuals, understand that people have traumatic reasons for that. Mm -hmm. I have traumatic reasons, reasons for that because people have broken my trust. People have broken mm -hmm. my heart, different things like that. And it doesn't work for me. We have to, like you alluded to, we have to respect and learn one another's trauma. I think that, you know, we, we can learn and, you know, figure out, you know, what 
what trauma you have in, encountered and how you want to move forward. But we don't we don't get the information in the forefront. But we um, even when you get it, it, it ain't even because even when you get it, it it's it goes back to that selfish nature of saying, I know what it is, but I'm gonna still do things the way I wanna do them. Why that's we, counterproductive. Yeah, but a lot of people it goes back to the selfish society. A lot of people do things the way they want to do them. Like you had you had the young lady saying, Well, I don't cater to men. Yeah. How? Well, you don't want one then. You clearly <laughs> sway, you don't you don't you clearly don't want a man. If you're not gonna cater to a black man, you know, it it it, it, it baffles me how I hear sisters all the time say, Oh, I ridicule a black man for being with a white woman, say, oh, I want a black man, but you don't know the half of what it means to be with a black man because you haven't taken the time to not only understand black men as a society and a culture, and this goes vice versa, because I know for a fact, while as black men, we we know y'all generally in y'all practices, we don't take enough time to know y'all as individuals and respect y'all but i will say that there i think personally there are more of us that understand y'all we just don't have the efficacy to put it to action because society tells us we being soft we doing this we doing that but i think y'all genuinely a lot of y'all genuinely just don't know black men because for for all of the women to come on and generalize so many black men, like you, you missed the show, but I said to somebody I called in uh, and I said, don't generalize black women because y'all black women, because women like to generalize and be like, oh, but black women ain't doing this. We ain't doing that. No, you can't come on here and generalize every black woman because you good. The difference between men and women, we be like, shit, I know my man ain't shit and I'm not going to fight it, fight no battle for him. Y'all will fight a battle for y'all whole y'all whole uh uh orientation, I guess. Yeah, and no. Mm -hmm. Um the thing is, who's really fighting for us but us, you know? And, and women? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, you know, you you do have African American men that will step up mm -hmm. to to protect. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think that it's not enough. Um, I think that you know we we kind of got thrown to the wayside a little bit. But all I can, all I can see how that can winning, be the, the 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 feeling of things. I mean, but all in yeah. all, y'all, all in all though, when you compare black women to black men, all in all, y'all are y'all are winning. Yeah, we we definitely have a the system educationally. The system, is designed, the system is designed that way. Yeah, but educationally, y'all running circles around us. You know, and, and many of our black men are being raised by y'all. It's not that we don't appreciate y'all mm -hmm. as a whole. You know, some of us don't know what to do or things of that nature. But I think the thing that we've always agreed upon is that the disconnect between black men and black women, we believe so much that we are so different when we really do share a lot of the so, same things. So one of the things I discussed with a few friends of mine mm -hmm. is that it's almost like black black women want an apology and a yeah. sincere apology yeah, i agree i'm sorry I that agree. i was not there to protect you i'm sorry i allowed this country to to rape and maim you i'm sorry that i was not there to help you with these children and build my family you know and the thing is that was not all they're doing the black man's doing no however I guess for some in some sense way of validation, you know, I think a lot of black women want that. They want you to come forth and say, you know, I'm sorry for all of this that you have endured for all these years. But there has to be a point where you have to try to move forward. But see, the thing is that the thing, the reason, and I agree with you, I believe that that feeling is in the air. And the reason why y'all need to abandon it is the same way we need to abandon it. Because right, we feel the yeah. same. But no, 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 the, the, we, we, it ain't about us getting it because neither one of us can give it to each other. How can we, how can we apologize for the ills of this nation? Yeah, that's 
definitely. You know what I'm saying? Know, it wasn't, a, it so, wasn't all of your doing. That's what I'm saying. You know? No, so, yeah. no, no. A large part of it is not our doing. Yeah. It's not y'all doing. The same way y'all feel, the way y'all feel, you think we don't? Chris Rock, famous stand-up. All my father wanted was a big piece of chicken. How you work <laughs> this hard, that hard. Right. You know what I'm big saying? Like, chicken, we, right? we feel the same way. When you look at it, yo, when you look at it, we are still at the very bottom of the totem pole. I mean, totem pole. I said totem pole. Totem pole. We are we are physical targets to each other. Yeah. We are physical targets to the white man, to the police, to the government. You know, we we feel in this pressure, this immense pressure. And you know, a lot of us are not doing our own favors. Don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but but we are feeling the same kind of pressure. And that's what I'm kind of saying. And I think we're kind of alluding to the same thing. Black people and the black community kind of need to let it go. Speak easy and let it go. I don't think that's going to happen. No, but we need to push that. I, I I think that instead of letting it go, I think we need to process through it. By letting it, by letting it go, I'm saying don't don't ignore it. I'm not saying don't address it. Mm -hmm. I'm saying understand that we can talk because we saw it happen mm -hmm. countless times in the bars when we had the live shows. We would see one side say something real <laughs> reckless, then we would see the other side say something real reckless, and then we inserted ourselves and we actually hurt each other and we let go of the pain after we said it. What we said, what happened? It was harmony. We might come back the very next month, had the same discussion, <laughs> had the same argument, but at the end of the day, it'd be harmony. But that's why I'm saying that instead of saying let it go, we need to process through it. So, yeah, the black woman wants that, that apology, but also I think the black man wants a level of understanding that I could not want to apologize too. But the thing is, it, we, we got to give, we, we first need to figure out what do you need? Mm hmm. What do you need? Because we, I think we have, we, we assume, mm. but we don't know. Mm. So we need to have that conversation first. Yes. What is it that you need black men? from me? No, black, black couples. Men? Black period. men. Period. What do you, you need? So the thing is, so like you were saying, you might have a real boost, boosterous, you know, loud talking, yeah. you know, chick or whatever. Yeah. And she might, you know, Get in your behind or whatever with right, the words. Right. You might not want that. You might have felt like you came from a family that belittled you all the time. Yes. So you're not trying to be in a relationship where but you're being that, belittled. But that goes back to understanding and respecting and learning each other's trauma. Here's the other problem. Right? You, We also have to, what do we need? We first need to stop grouping every brother, every sister mm -hmm. in the same person as the last person. Yeah. That's the fact of the trauma. And the other thing is, you know, we need to figure out what's real and what's not real. Mm -hmm. You know, there are people out here that, that have a fantasy life of, you know, who they dating and mm -hmm. what they come to the table with or what they don't come to the table with. Like, you but know, see, the thing is, all uh, any, any type of relationship or love is a gamble. Yes. So it's it's hard to say don't bring your past into the new situation because you're not going to touch fire if you've already been burned. You're going to be a little bit more cautious how you approach the fire. Yes. And if you need to go through the fire to get to an end goal, you're going to think about how you're going to be able to get around the fire and without touching the flame. You see what I'm saying? So to say, don't bring it into my next situation. If I went through a certain level of trauma, my next time I'm, I'm going to try a relationship, I'm not going to move the same. I'm not going to talk the same. Things are going to be a little bit different because what I don't want to happen is what happened same the last thing. time. Even though it's a whole new person, a whole new personality, a whole other set of good and bad. Right. However, I'm going to move a little bit differently. I think I'm not saying natural. I'm not saying don't bring it. Whatever I always said, respect and learn that that was the trauma you've been through and that I can't repeat the same thing and look for different results. That's called right. insanity. Right. But I wanted to touch on something, though. Now, you spoke about the head of the family. Now, tying into all of the other societal and cultural things that we're going on, just going through just in America, societally and culturally, America. who is the head of the family in 2017? The children. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. But I mean, traditionally, I okay, 
Traditionally, right now, I have I have my kids. You got your kids. Mm-hmm. We get together. Who gonna run the house? See, that's something specific to me. Because you got a different yeah. experience than that. Yeah. Okay. That'd be something that's specific you, to me. Since you were raised by your daddy yes. and your mama yep. and your daddy ran the household. Shout out to your daddy. And Hi, I daddy. want you to talk about that too, though. Because I want, well, never mind. What? No, I'm saying your daddy and everything that went on this past weekend. This weekend. The, the walk and. Oh. Come on now. Yeah, I'm sorry. Now. See, you, I was on the way. Listen, you, 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 you I do put, a lot. I know you put so lot. much to the back, <laughs> you won't even remember. But I, I couldn't make because I had like, the girls and it's too whoa. cold and I'm everything like, else. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But no. But so, so it would be. Shout like, out my to daddy. Might, my house might be different, and between, because you're used to parents, a certain structure. But my parents had, a, they have a good partnership. Uh huh. So, but who ultimately was the king? Well, I think who ultimately was the who, king? Who decision made the last? Ah. That's good, but okay. Every house, every black household is not like that. No, you might have a stepdad, stepmom, or mm-hmm. you know, a different dynamic. What, in your opinion, in today's day and age, where anybody could be anything, what should what should this look like? Like, what is your opinion? My opinion that today it it should be whoever can best lead the family. Um, I think that. In what way? In the way that's the the most healthy and and you know the family. So I'm not. And so in that in that whatever, whatever what you're saying is I I understand because if you're the bread if you make more money than me, I get that. But that don't mean I'm not talking about financially. Yeah, because so I might way? make I might make more money than than the man in a relationship, but the man in a relationship might budget and finance better than I did. Mm-hmm. So what part? So what part of leadership is most important? Because if I, if if you budget and finance better than me, but I make more rational decisions. Do you watch This Is Us? No, I don't. Why? I don't. I never got into it. You should be ashamed of yourself. The I watch Blackish. The couple on this. And my man Dre ab- run the house. God damn it! I absolutely love that the couple. Um, the African American couple. I don't. I didn't watch it. I get into it. But, but what's um, the reference of it? But no, it they they really work. As a team, and for the most part, the husband kind of goes along with what the wife says, not because mm. he's weak or, or whipped, but she's smart. Right. And she's making you know sound judgment calls for the sake of their family. However, when he feels strongly about something, he will say something. Follows, but no, but family. that, but that, that, and, and see what you're saying is, and I, I gave you a trick question. I gave you a loaded question. When I ask you who should lead, and I agree, I think it all it all depends on your synergy, your chemistry. You know, you could be smart as hell, and you can have insight. You can have goals. One thing a man is gonna be that a woman ain't gonna be, and you could fight me, say I'm sexist or whatever. We're gonna be rational, even at our most irrational state. We are going to be rational. That's common. I'm not saying every man. I'm not saying every woman. But common practices, we're rational because we don't think as much as y'all do. I'm I'm being honest. We don't we don't, I agree. we don't think as deep as y'all do. We can, like me personally, I could think about my PhD. I'm I'm trying to get my PhD. I think about this, that, and the third, and then I just get overwhelmed. I'll be like, shut shut up. You know, and the football <laughs> the football player in me just be like, play after play, what is gonna happen? But y'all be like mm. I need to get this done. I need to get this done. Or oh, I need to get my bills in. Or oh, I need an accountant. Or oh, I need this. Or oh, I need that. I need this. I need that. And I'm like, well, what was step one? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's just a man woman thing. And that's how we're wired. I think that comes from naturally just having to carry everything. Seriously. Like, it, that, that's, that's how your mind actually works when you are in that place where you got to carry the load. Like, we've been in that position for sway. a very long time. It's sway. And I could argue, I could argue that when I have to feed us, mm-hmm. fight the white man, that me taking shit one day at a time comes from environmentally, I might not make it home and provide for you to think about mm-hmm. 20 different things. So it ain't that we can't do it. Mm-hmm. It's just a matter of what we uh, see. It, and it's funny because this is probably the first time that we might have ever had jousting opinions 
But I remember being in the bars. It it just always it always goes back to that for me. Just watching people literally come in there with their baggage. I mean, we would have people coming in there no, monthly. The and guns. I think I think we need to go. I think we need to do a show. We need to talk to Don McKay about that because I know he can do it. We need to do a show again at a bar and then have this happen. Because people would come out from last month. After they resolved something, come back and they like thought that. about and something another, different. And yes, day, yes, last yes, <laughs> man. And them joints, them joints was epic, man. But I used to get, I used to get trash. I ain't gonna lie, I used to get trash. But when I was trash, I had my best commentary. <laughs> I had my best commentary. I think that we, um, we just need to communicate more and just that's a and common then come, thing. And then come to to each other. Yes, with, with some level of openness and understanding. Yes. I think we always on the defense because yes. because of the pain. You yes. Know? The pain ain't easy to get rid of. The pain, not at all. The pain is not easy to just you know, say, okay, I'm ignored or just mask it. Because even when you put a band on, it comes back. It bleeds out. It comes right We back. This might be the only show that we actually almost covered 80% of everything we had ran down. Let me ask you this question. We did it. No, let me tell you. Let me, ask, let me talk about two things we real quick. It. Um. Yeah, damn near eighty percent of everything we talked about. Um, I don't want to ask you this question because it's really defeating. Can can we really save everybody? We don't need that right now. It ain't Friday yet. I didn't get as drunk as I want to be. Yes. Don't save her. Don't save her. Let me ask you a question. Let me just touch on that really quick. Which one? On what? It keep America stays the oil machine, the money making machine. Yeah. It is to keep people sick. Period yeah. across the board, physically, mentally, we probably so you, have the answers. What you're virtually saying is that, and and that and that's what, that's what uh, somebody else said. A comedian said, "The the the, the money's in the medicine, not the cure." Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So Absolutely. getting away from that, when we when I watched the show, uh uh no no was it no 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 when I posted what I posted uh, about the young lady talking about. Cooking for a man, <laughs> cleaning for a man, clean, doing all them things, and then no and then one of our followers said, "I don't cater to no man." Mm-hmm. Like I wanted that was my personal question. What do you feel about she, that? She has a boyfriend. Um, how do I feel about that? She has a boyfriend. Um, is you happy? <laughs> Ti said, "Is you happy?" I don't cater to no man. Well, she said, "I don't cater to no man." I think we should cater to one. Another. She's a black. She's a black woman. I know. I think we should cater to one another. I agree with that, but you believe we should cater to one another. Yeah. She believes that she shouldn't cater to no man. What are your thoughts? Why not? My thing is, why not? She didn't why, provide why any information. You, why, why would you not want to cater to your man if you're in a relationship and you're happy, mm-hmm. and th- even if you're not all that great or unhappy? <laughs> You got to think outside the box. Maybe, you know, if you're not getting what you want, maybe you need to do something different to try to get what you want. And the thing is, if you believe in reciprocity, you know, maybe you need to be the first person to separate you. I mean, mm. you know, it's it's a lot of ways of thinking about that. Um, but I think that in a healthy relationship, you should absolutely get it. Well, see, the thing like the, the lady in the video says, she said, you know, I've been hurt. People have been hurt. That shouldn't stop me. From wanting to do what I know but is see, right. I think that that's that's something that's innate. I'm a I'm a nurturer. Mm-hmm. So that's it's natural. Co word for babying. It no, no. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's co word for babying. I mean, I think that you know that's something that it's not it's not about you. It's something that it does something for me. And I think that's a major thing that it, that in order to be in a successful relationship, there is a lot of sacrifice that comes about with it, yeah. and people equally need to sacrifice and. If you're sacrificing for me, maybe more than I might be sacrificing for you, and just due to the circumstances, yeah, you know, I need to still appreciate it. I need to still show you love. I need to still cater to you. And for Shorty to say she don't cater to men, I find an asinine. Like, what are you doing? Talk to her man. Maybe. No. She has a man. I'm so, good with that. So, so I don't know, but the thing I'm good is, with that. You know, I think, like I said, we we if you're not getting some type of special, yeah, and, yeah, they do. Some of y'all, 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 some of y'all,
uh, uh, sisters look at women catering to men as a weakness. Absolutely. Like, girl, I ain't got to do all I'm that. I'm not giving in to him. Yeah, yeah I'm not bowing I'm giving down. Him. He ain't running over top of me. No. No. That's that relationship. That's that bullshit. I, I think you're right. I think that it this is, relationship is strong. Y'all, y'all missed the whole conversation no, we about that. We don't miss nothing. We was, just, ah. we was just on the other side and off the roof. No. It I does go back to all of that, man. But for I her to all right, like say that on the post, like if you work a nine to five and you're able to go home and cook dinner and have your man's food ready for him by the time he get home, that ain't weakness. That's str- how do you do that? That's, how do you make not, not not only that? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Right? I I I cook. I clean. I do, you know, man things, and I do it not because I feel like I had to, because I want to. Mm-hmm. You know, but for somebody to just blatantly say they're not gonna cater to their man, that means you don't even know the person that you with. You're not even trying to know the person that you with. Because as men, we know their duties she has that a we weak gotta man. do. Is that is that what? Uh, oh, I don't know nothing. I don't, I don't know this, nothing about no, her. But, but to but you know, to, you know, know the guy flip about it, maybe, is it God How do you know? How do you know, know he want to be catered to? Yeah, so she you know about her man. What what person don't want to be catered to? I don't know no woman that don't want to be I mean, catered to. Everybody, everybody wants to be everybody catered wants to. Be special. I think yeah. that she said if not, the right I go thing. Pay for both that. should cater to. <laughs> if both people cater, then the relationship would be so much better. Absolutely. But if you got one person catering and one person is is not fulfilled, even if they enjoy uh, uh, pleasing somebody, at a certain point, mm-hmm. your back is going to itch too. Some point in time. Right. I'm going to just speak on my personal experience. Right. Everything could... Right. Could assume well, could assume to be well and good and and great. And I've been in a position where I've sacrificed, I've catered, I've sacrificed, I've done everything. And and to my nature, to my own fault, even with my philanthropic work, I do so much more for other people than I do myself. And it wasn't till that I didn't have no more that I was like, damn, where's mine? I'm like, where's mine? And if you don't have that, man. You had a loss. And it's crazy because you won't never know until you actually get it. I mean, that's with anything. That's even like with a job. You can't keep giving and giving and giving and you're not replenishing shit. yourself. You're not putting nothing back in. Yeah, well, shit. At the, at the 4 o'clock, I'm out of here. I don't give a damn. <laughs> at the 4 o'clock, I'm out of there. I'm out of there. But you definitely got to have that, though. Like, I mean, she says she's not catering, but I mean, she's saying you can't, you can't she's speak saying for her. That, but you you don't you know what she's doing. Her. You don't know what she's doing. And then the thing is, you like you say, you have to know each other how each other love and how we interpret love. Right? Maybe that's, that's she's unhealthy. Not catering to him, but maybe she's doing something else. That's unhealthy. Well. If she can avidly say that in public, see, I'm the type of person too where if you avidly say that in public, I'm like, yo, what you trying to make me look like a sucker? Huh? You ain't going to cater with me? So I'm just some sucker? Huh? Diamond K. Yeah, she got a late come out. I don't cater to Diamond K. (laughs) (laughs) On a public forum. I'm looking at this shit like, uh, baby, I'm in the group too. Uh, I saw that. (laughs) What what you mean? (laughs) You know what I mean? So. I mean, maybe she front. She could be. Everybody Mm. is Right. Yeah. It's true. Some it's true. Mm-hmm. That's not everybody wants somebody to bow down. Mm-hmm. You know, I, got a good, I got a good question. Let me cater nice. to you. Yo, I like that song. I don't like I don't like Beyonce or 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 I don't like none of them, but that was I like Kelly. And uh what was the other one? Latoya. I love Latoya. <laughs> Latoya. <laughs> The one that got kicked out. Come find me, baby. The one that got kicked out. Yo, Latoya, come find me, baby. I got one thing, though. Culturally, that's my last thing. Culturally, right? So I see white folks all the time, right? I see young white couples all the time. Now, I was at Chipotle today before I got here. Shout out to Chipotle. Shout out to Chipotle, huh? I did. I ate it. What about me? You need to go see me. Mm, he was in Vegas. My bad. Um, I went to Chipotle <laughs> and I saw a white couple, right? And I saw the interaction, right? Mm-hmm. Now I don't know how old they were, but they are Hopkins students. Now the the young Caucasian girl looked up at 
the Caucasian boy and said, carry this because some, 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 some. And the facial expression that he made was like, mother, but he took it. <laughs> and then he just went about his business. Now, culturally, I was like, is that a white thing? Or is that a thing that he watched his dad and his mom and the rest? Because me, I be trying to check myself. I'm like, what if you? What would you have done in that moment? Because she was just like, she gave him hella sass. Like, because she didn't give him the neck roll. She's just like, and I was just like, and he looked at her like, and took it. I was like, oh, shit. What is going on? What are y'all thoughts? Is that a, a cultural thing? ethnical thing or is that mother and father raised or is it both because I've seen that dynamic happen a few times but I just thought of it as white people white people in. no black people do that all the time I don't know what you're talking about no no, no but I've when seen. black people do that it's totally different Jen when a black woman fusses their man out in public mm-hmm. it's totally different okay now this man got fussed out mm-hmm. and he kept it moving with a smile Okay, is that his culture, meaning from his ethnicity, or is that his culture from, and I'm assuming, I don't know that he was raised a mother and father, but just assume that he was raised a mother and father in a, in a household. What was that? Because a lot of people perpetuate the idea. There are a lot of studies about married ethnicities, mm-hmm. whites and blacks, how they have a higher married rate mm-hmm. and how they're more successful and all right. these other things. Is it the ethnicity or is it the fact that they have both parents in the home more frequently than us? I don't think so. I've seen. I've you don't seen, think what? I've Tell seen me both what. Both ethnicities kind of be in kind of situations like mm-hmm. that. I think it's more so you knowing your partner. So it could be, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take your sass right now, but I'm going to see you later. <laughs> <laughs> or it could be like, okay, I know what you need. I ain't paying that no mind. I mean, it could be a whole bunch. Of, it could be you could think about this in a whole bunch of different ways because I've seen it happen like that, and and it's been with with you know white people and Creep. black people. I mean, I don't so I don't I don't think it's. A I knew I knew you would give me a very thing. social worky answer. A, a more of a, a personality thing. I knew like, you would give me a very you gotta social. Gotta know each answer. other because if you know I'm sassy and you gonna carry it for me either way, no matter what I say, you might just say okay, I'm gonna just shut up and carry it. But like you said later on. You're right. And I knew you was going to give me a very social worky answer. Here's my thing. Here's my thing. I, I think I think sense. that ethnically they are in a different place than we are. Because statistically their people stay married long. Not yeah. saying they stay successfully married longer, but they have, and it's statistical stuff. I'm not fact checking that the site or the source, but I, when I did look you know, they, they have more marital stuff going on. Not yeah. saying it's good. Not I'm saying they have better they things. Because black people stay married whether they did have it or not. We don't get divorced. Uh, so, white people get divorced. Yeah. Black people don't get divorced. No, 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 we do. No, no. Oh, we do. <laughs> they we, don't fuck with oh, 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 and oh, we, oh, we do. We do. We do in Baltimore City. No, that's true. Shout out, shout out to my daddy <laughs> and his, uh, and, and, uh, you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, but no, I think it's a, I think it's a personality thing. I don't think it's true. All right, that's fair. Thing. That's fair. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look up the research and do it before before we go. Um, I just want to say because Dom McKay been doing it all night. Wait on Fire dot com, home of the Dom McKay <laughs> Morning Show. New episodes stream daily at nine a.m. Call number is four 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 three six one two seven seven. Today's broadcast this Thursday, November sixteenth. 2017 was brought to you in part by the Baltimore Music Award. Let your voice be heard at the 2017 BMAs, which I heard was sold out, which is foul because I didn't get no ticket. Polls <laughs> are open for the 7th annual that 7th annual 7 years red carpet event honoring Baltimore. Log on to the BaltimoreMusicAwards.com before December 3rd to cast your vote in all categories. RadioOnFire.com or Radio on Fire broadcast Reach over 276,000 viewers That's per a month. Lot of viewers. Advertise your product, service, or event on Radio on Fire by sponsoring an episode of the Speakeasy for as low as $50. Visit radioonfire.com slash 
forward slash promo to get started. If you want to see any past episodes of Speak Easy or any other show that I love, visit RadioOnFire.com to watch us on demand. Click radio shows in the name of our show, Speak Easy, to see any episodes you missed. Jim Beam, holler at me because I'm the only black man drinking your product. Holler at me. Support the Baltimore Music Awards. This is a home... Homegrown award show. DJ Don McKay is, is a local people. relic, man. You gotta support each DJ other. DJ Don McKay is a local old school relic, man. I heard. I didn't know I that. Didn't, I didn't know it first, but I, heard. I didn't know that until I had word. Devin on the show. That's the word on the street. And Devin and him are about the same age. I would say Devin's a little older than Don McKay. <laughs> Just have a guess. But Devin took Don McKay's mixtape, and Devin is like an elephant of knowledge. <laughs> And this brother remembers everything, anybody. Mm-hmm. He was like, wait a minute, you did the mix with the other man? And Don McKay looked up like, yeah, I did. <laughs> I was like, yo, you fell. And then they had the, the show with the DJs on. The one brother that was right here didn't let the other brother talk a lot. I'm just going to say that. But he, he looked like he was cool with playing that role. But it was very enlightening, man. And it was just dope to hear how much musical talent musical talent i'm putting my baltimore accent on <laughs> musical talent came out of the city man yeah. and i i had a lot of questions they weren't going answered because don mckay was actually over here but it was dope man and he's um, supposed to be interviewing on don mckay remember yeah i'm ready but you know what i don't want to interview him alone so let's do that let's do that in the very near future Cause I got questions. No, 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 no. I just no. Well, Cause it I know, we I know she's all night. Yeah, but the once. last, but but not last time. But the time before last, Don K tried to cut me a new one. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then, uh, and then the silent killer Nikki over there. I mean, she kind of supported me at the end of things. Usually she's not on my side, but she supported me. But uh, yeah, we got to interview Don McKay because I don't support think anybody's really done that. Support this, this but endeavor. it's sold out though. To support this endeavor, okay, but you can still vote. But it's so no, follow. I'm not. I, that, I, don't, I don't give a damn about the voters. It got till December third. I'm talking about us. How we getting in this bitch? Oh, I'm getting in. I, that see, you're concerned. I'm not. See, and that's what I be talking about. Like, why are you? Why? Why, why you always gotta take that approach? Like, I just felt hostility. Like, I feel like that if you get in, you're gonna act like you don't know me. No, I got you. You're probably gonna get in, and if they interview you about the speakeasy, I'm probably not even gonna come up. No, I, I got you. We in there. Don't yeah. worry about it. Yeah. Well. All right. You been tuning in live with the speakeasy, RadioOnFire.com, Baltimore, Maryland, RadioOnFire.com, home of the Diamond K Morning Show. Check us out. Uh, it's been fun. Yes. Be good. Be good to one another, y'all. Look yes. out for each other. Be good we to yourselves. We got. Be good to yourselves. Um, shout out to Lady Pope, return from Vegas on the sophisticated savage one, <laughs> EJ Stewart. <laughs> and uh, we out. Peace. Good night.